Welcome back to Cinema Scoop. Today we will recap the 2022 war drama movie, All Quiet on the Western Front. Spoilers ahead. We begin with a view of a body-littered ground. Dead soldiers are sprawled out across the battlefield as the war between the French and Germans rages. Gunfire and explosions ring out as German men attack from the trenches. They are commanded to run out onto the battlefield, and we follow Heinrich, who runs in fear toward the French while men die alongside him. The scene cuts as he lands a blow, and we transition to a truck filled with dead German soldiers. Their Uniforms and boots are removed, cleaned, and patched up to be reused by new soldiers. Paul Baumer rides to school on his bike and meets with his friends Franz Müller, Albert Kropp, and Ludwig Baum. They are all excited to go to the war and question Paul about whether his parents have signed the permission slip for him to go as well. When they realized he received no signature, Franz offers to forge it, but Paul decides to do so himself. All the students gather inside as they listen to the principal give an electrifying speech about fighting for their country. They all holler with excitement as they have romanticized the idea of war and envision themselves as heroes. Then they all line up in their underwear to receive their new uniforms. Paul notices that his uniform has Heinrich's name tag in it and returns it believing it belongs to someone else. The recruiter, with intent to hide the death of the uniform's previous owner, laughs it off and removes the tag as he tells Paul that it was probably too small for the other soldier. We see the recruiter drop the name tag on the floor amongst a pile of other name tags that belong to dead soldiers. With excitement, Paul and his friends dress in their uniform and march alongside other soldiers while they sing a German song. They ride in trucks towards the trenches, each given their own gun, and they holler again in excitement to be in Paris, as the lieutenant welcomes them to the Western Front. Before they arrive, we see a doctor in a blood-smeared uniform direct the trucks toward the infirmary, but only a few follow. The doctor tells the lieutenant that he needs the trucks to transport dying men from the battlefield, and the lieutenant reluctantly agrees. They all exit the trucks and must now march toward the front. They arrive at the trenches amid a raging war and must bail out the water that is pooling on the ground. Here, Paul meets a veteran soldier named Kaczynski who offers him water to drink. The friend group is noticeably less excited as they realize what they're seeing does not reflect what they imagined it to be. Later that night, as Paul and Albert guard the walls of the trenches, Paul believes he's heard movement and is excited to shoot his first French soldier. He fires at a body but realizes that he mistook the scampering sound of rats as advancing French troops. Due to the flash of his muzzle, he exposes his position, and a soldier fires back at him. He is uninjured, but a lieutenant informs him that he must move to another position after he shoots his gun. The French fire artillery shells that explode around the German trenches, and the soldiers scurry toward the bunker to take cover. Ludwig cries in fear, and when the bombs stop falling, another veteran named Tiaden tells them that this is the French's strategy to allow their infantry to advance on the Germans. A scared soldier tries to leave the bunker and Kaczynski attempts to stop him but fails. The soldier is blown up as he reaches the doorway, and bombs cause the bunker to collapse. They try to escape, but Paul is trapped under the wreckage. His friends find him and pull him out, but leave to help others. Paul sits in shock as he takes in his surroundings. He heads down into the trenches and finds Kaczynski, who offers him bread. Just as he sits to eat, an aggravated lieutenant urges him to get back to work and gather the dog tags of fallen soldiers. While he does so, he hears a crack under his shoe and finds Ludwig's glasses. His breathing becomes ragged while he searches for Ludwig, and seconds later, he finds him lying face down in the mud with a part of his left leg blown off. Paul balls as he removes his friend's dog tag. We transition to a recruiter reading the names and birthdays of the dog tags of fallen soldiers while another makes a record of it. A man collects the records and delivers them to German State Secretary Matthias Erzberger, who is stunned by the large number of soldiers that have died in the last few weeks. Matthias meets with the German High Command to convince them to negotiate an armistice with their opposition. The German soldiers are no longer on the battlefield, and Paul and Kaczynski, who they all now refer to as Cat, hitch a ride to Champagne. Paul hoists Cat over a wall, and he steals a goose from a farm. The farmer shoots at them as they run away, but misses. Paul, Cat, Franz, Albert, and Tjaden savor the goose secretly. Together, they peel potatoes, and Paul sees women walking by in the distance. Franz runs to talk to them, but surprises the others when he decides to leave with them. They continue to talk, and Chaden confesses that he wants to become a military policeman, but Cat discourages him. We see soldiers fighting to get a hold of letters sent to them, and Cat, who is illiterate, brings his to Paul to read it for him. His wife writes about sending him food, and we find out that Cat has a dead son. She hopes that he'll come home soon, and Cat worries that he may not be able to easily integrate back into society after the war is over. Late in the night, Franz returns, and Paul informs him that they must rise early to look for missing children that were supposed to join them. He shares with them the French woman's scarf, and they all take turns to get a whiff of it. 
In the morning, we see Matthias and General Friedrichs make their way to the train stations where Matthias and the German delegation board to meet with their opposition to negotiating the armistice. General Friedrichs remains behind. Simultaneously, the group leaves to search for the missing children, and Albert cites a poster of a woman which he takes with him. Paul finds them all dead from removing their gas masks too soon. Later that night, a soldier informs General Friedrichs that the French are calling for more men from Latier and have tanks that are stuck in Fernancourt, but they may be planning to attack. The general expresses his dismay with the peace negotiations as he believes they are selling out the fatherland. He stands firm in his commitment to the war, and so he orders an attack on the French before they can receive their tanks and fresh troops. The German soldiers are awoken and sent back to the front. While they prepare to attack, the German delegation meets with a French marshal named Ferdinand Foch. We see Albert pin his poster on the wall in the trenches and promise the woman to come back to her. Matthias pleads with Marshal Foch for an armistice, and the Marshal gives him 72 hours to sign a document entailing non-negotiable conditions in order for the war to end. Simultaneously, the German soldiers begin their attack. Some are shot down, but most make it to the French trenches, where they engage in combat and begin to overtake them. Kat, Paul, and Chaden stumble upon a spread of food, and while devouring as much as they can, they begin to feel rumbling under their feet. As rats scamper away, they run out to look and are stunned at the sight of tanks approaching. The soldiers open fire, but their bullets are rendered useless against the impenetrable machinery. They are now being pushed back by the French reinforcements, and Franz is separated from the group. As the tanks make a beeline for German trenches, Kat, Paul, and Albert shove bombs into one of the machine's apertures to stop it. Albert signals Paul to look behind, and they witness their fellow soldiers engulfed in flames as the French attack them with flamethrowers. They fire back at them, and Albert gets shot. He hides behind the immobile tank, and Paul runs in fear but is knocked over by a bomb that explodes near him. As he looks around, he freezes when he spots Albert surrounded by French troops. Albert surrenders and pleads for mercy, but they light him on fire, and he dies as he tries to crawl into a puddle. Cat snaps Paul back to reality, and they run to the trenches, where a sergeant orders them to retreat to Iguisac and carry the machine gun and ammunition with them. Paul cries out that he misses his comrades, and Cat urges him to run. We see an overhead view of the battlefield on fire, and the scene transitions to the German delegation discussing the French's conditions. The German Major General is against the terms and believes that they'd end up worse in this surrender than if they were to lose the war. Matthias reminds him that there would still be copious amounts of death, but he retaliates that they would have to give up almost everything, including their means of transportation if they sign. Matthias tells him that he is free to leave. The Count interjects that many will die in the coming winter without transportation rather than dying with honor on the battlefield, but this rubs Matthias the wrong way. He expresses that his son felt no honor when he died in the war and orders a soldier to telegraph copies of the French delegation's conditions to the government. As the German soldiers retreat, Paul falls into a crater and pretends to be dead. He hears a French soldier yell behind him to keep firing before a bomb knocks him over into the crater. Paul treads quickly through the pool of water in the crater and scuffles with the French soldier before stabbing him in the chest chest six times. The man's wheezing disturbs Paul and prompts him to stuff the man's mouth full of dirt to shut him up. Paul balances his helmet on a stick and raises it slowly over the crater to check if the coast is clear, but the helmet is shot at immediately. Paul wails as he tries to rub the blood off his fingers and begins to feel guilty as he watches the man die. He rushes over to him, wets a cloth in the water and squeezes it into the man's mouth. He opens the man's clothing to look at his wounds and presses gauze against them, but this does very little and the man dies. Consumed by guilt, Paul goes through the man's personal belongings while apologizing. He vows to reach out to the man's wife and hugs his body before leaving. He walks through the battlefield as fires continue to burn around him. Matthias receives word from the soldier that he has been granted permission to sign for the armistice. As Paul arrives at Egwistak, a soldier informs him of the negotiations taking place. Jaden calls out to Paul from the infirmary as he sees him walking past. We find out that Tiaden has suffered a terrible injury to the leg. Paul tells him that he's going home soon, but Jaden fears that he will not be accepted into the police force in his condition. Paul assures him that he'll make it, but Jaden refuses to be amputated. He pulls out the French woman's scarf and hands it to Paul, signaling that Franz has died. Paul goes to the cafeteria and finds Kat fighting over food. He tells him that he's found Tiaden, and they agree to bring an extra portion of food for him. Kat gives Jaden cutlery to eat, but he uses the fork to stab himself repeatedly in the neck while their backs are turned. Paul reminisces about his mother and how she warned him not to go. He frets over his dead friends, but Cat urges him to think only that he still has life. He confesses to Cat that he's afraid of what's to come. The French and German delegations meet for the signing of the armistice, and it is declared that it will take effect at 11 a.m. on the 11th day of the 11th month, which is six hours away. We see soldiers cheer in excitement as the disgruntled general looks on and orders them all to be gathered. 
Kat looks around in awe, as this is the first time the Western Front has ever been so quiet. They leave for the farm in Champagne as Kat talks about his wife and encourages Paul to go to university. This time, Kat hoists Paul over the wall to steal the goose. Paul stashes a few eggs in his pocket, and as he's about to grab the goose, the farmer's son opens the door and sees him. He reports to his father, who then chases them with the gun. Again, he misses, and they get away. They laugh as Paul realizes that a bullet has cracked one of the eggs in his pocket. They crack the rest and drink them, and Kat heads into the forest to pee. The farmer's son sneaks up behind him and shoots him. As Paul struggles to get him back to the infirmary, two trucks pass with cheering soldiers, but neither stop to offer a ride. He lifts Cat over his shoulders and carries him the rest of the way, but the doctor declares him dead. The bullet had punctured his liver and poisoned his blood. The soldiers gather in the yard of the general's home along with new recruits. He orders a final attack and those who defy are killed. We see a desensitized Paul ask for the time. With only 15 minutes left before 11 a.m., they march. Clueless French troops happily eat and converse in the trenches as they await the end of the war. After celebrating over a glass of wine, a sergeant hears the rumbling of footsteps approaching and signals an enemy attack. The Germans make it to the trenches, and Paul tries to fight off a Frenchman who's attacking a new recruit. They tumble over into a bunker, and when they get to their feet, they stare at each other in silence, neither attempting to fight. Just as it seems a truce is being formed, a French troop sneaks up from behind and stabs Paul in his chest with a bayonet seconds before the 11 a.m. horn blows. As Paul struggles to breathe, he makes his way out of the bunker to get a first glimpse at peace. The war is over, the Western Front is quiet, and he dies in the trenches with the scarf in his hand. We see Albert's poster still nailed to the trench wall, flailing in the wind. The recruit Paul saved is ordered to gather the dog tags off of fallen soldiers. When he reaches Paul, he stops in shock. Then he takes the scarf, ties it around his neck, and moves on without Paul's dog tag. Subscribe to Cinema Scoop so you never miss the latest movie explanations, reviews, and analyses. Thanks for watching.